book of John, chapter number one. We did conclude our Christmas series last Sunday, but I want to kind of put an explanation mark on it this morning, I guess. A conclusion to the conclusion. I'm good at that, right? More than one closing. So we want to look at John for that this morning. How many realize that the book of Genesis and the book of John start with the same words? Do you ever notice that? In the beginning. In the beginning. Genesis was the beginning of all creation. And John reemphasizes that because there is a new beginning for us under the second man, Adam, which is Christ Jesus. And we've talked about Christmas, it's all about Jesus, all through the month of December. And uh, something we have to understand, and we've got to get a grasp and concept of that for sure. But I want us to go a little little deeper uh, today as we start off this new year. John 1, 1 through 4 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things... Were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. We still have our nativity scene, our manger scene here in the foyer. Many people still have it up. We talk about this baby Jesus. I watched this skit from the skit guys, and the guys were standing there putting the decorations on the trees, and he was saying, oh, wasn't, isn't this wonderful Christmas, the baby Jesus coming? And the one guy says, I wonder whatever happened to that guy. And he says, he went to the cross. Oh, that was the same guy? You know, they were, they were tying it in, you know, just a, a funny there to get a point across. And he said, oh, man, I never never realized that. I wonder whatever happened to that guy. He lives in our hearts. That's the same guy. He said, I never never put them all together. He said, because it's one guy. One guy. And so he said, man, we've we've got to stop this just baby Jesus one time a year. We need to proclaim him and profess him every day of the year. And, And with this sarcastic, dry sense of humor, not even a sense of humor, the guy looks and says, drinking his coffee. That's the point. That's the point. So the point is, we have to know who this baby Jesus is that we celebrate at Christmas. Because it's the one question in our lives which all of our eternal destiny lies. Everything hangs on who is Jesus. Not just who is Jesus, but who is he to me? Who is this Jesus? If we answer it wrong, we're in trouble. If we've got the right understanding of who only Jesus is and what that entails, we have got to understand the doctrine of the Trinity. So we're going to start off 2023 morning, the divinity of the Trinity. Stretch your hands this direction and let's pray. Father, we love you today. Thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy. Thankful for who you are. Lord God, we're thankful that Christmas is all about Jesus. Thankful that we as vessels of clay who have been born again we need to also be all about jesus and i just ask you heavenly father to saturate us in your spirit and your presence and your anointing and we'll be careful to give you the praise and the honor and glory for what's going to be accomplished here today in jesus name amen don't forget no service this evening Uh, many do uh new year's things with their family what have you so uh, no service this evening we will be back Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, the adults and the teenagers will be in here uh, filling our our time spot. We're all going to do it together, our prayer uh, here in the sanctuary. It's a prayer meeting for the adults and teenagers. The kids will still have class, but the adults and teenagers uh, will be in here uh, from 7 until 7 to 8. As long as you want to stay, please stay at least until 8. Be like Jesus and say, could you not watch with me for one hour? So if you could, pray with me for an hour. And if you got to go after that, head on out. Uh, some can tarry and stay longer if they would like. 
uh, that will be fine. But from 7 to 8, Wednesday night, we'll be, we'll be praying. There is several spots still to be filled on the prayer uh, list. If you would like to and join in with that, please fill out a spot and come uh, to pray here in the sanctuary. We're saturating the sanctuary in prayer for 2023. So as we look this morning in John 1, 1 through 4, uh, we, we've talked, as we said, a lot about Jesus and who he is. And to get that better understanding, we've got to know what is the Holy Trinity? What is the Trinity that we, we believe that we, in our declaration of faith in the church of God, we believe in God the Father, we believe in God the Son, we believe in God the Holy Ghost, eternally existing in three persons. So we believe that. And we do not worship three gods, though. And uh, so many will say, we all worship three gods. We don't. But we worship one God who's revealed himself in three persons. So God revealed something about himself uh, way back in the Old Testament in, in speaking to Moses in Exodus chapter 3. He said that he has no beginning and he has no ending. When he, when he said that, he said this in Exodus 3 and 14. This is God, we would say, this is God the Father that's speaking this. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thou shalt, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Then we come over to the book of John, a few chapters beyond our text, to chapter 8, verses 56 through 58. This here says, when Jesus taught in the temple. So when Jesus taught in the temple, he said this, he said that to the Pharisees, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Exodus. Who shall we say sent? I am. Jesus said the same thing in John chapter 8. I am. Acts chapter 5. That, that's showing that in the beginning was God, God the Father. In the beginning was God, God the Son. Well, Acts chapter 5, Ananias and his wife. Anybody remember reading about these two? They, they, uh, his wife's name was Sapphira, and they, they sold a piece of property. And they wanted to be praised, and they wanted to be flattered. And they, uh, they didn't want to, to praise and be flattering. They wanted to be praised and be flattered. So they came to Peter and said this, in effect, in Acts chapter 5, first couple of verses, we're going to give everything we've got from this property to the church. Peter knew that they were a couple of liars. Instantly, he knew that they were lying. What do you call that? discernment. Peter had discernment. It'll do you good to get discernment because there's folks that will lie to you. There's folks that will say that they're a prophet or a prophetess or they're a preacher or they're, uh, they're a Christian and they'll lie to you. They want to be praised and they want to be flattered and they want to uh, remember the concept that I told you that uh, Bishop Hill shared in one of his messages in one of his books that we as men have a, a problem. There's a defect in us. Uh, God didn't make very many defects, but there seems to be a defect in man that when you pat man on the back, his head gets bigger. It's like there's a pump built into the back. And so you're going to meet those people that they, they, they think that they're something. Uh, but Peter knew they were lying. Uh, and listen, it will do us good when we know somebody is lying uh, uh, that we just go ahead and call them out on it. Oh, that makes them cringe. Verse 3 and 4, Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thy heart? Did he say to lie to me? No, he wasn't worried about being lied to. Men's going to lie to us. He said, you've done worse than lie to me. Why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While his remain, was it not thine own? And was it soul, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart and has not lied? Un thou hast not lied unto me but unto God. He dropped dead. They carried him out. Sapphira came in, and she told the same lie. 
He said, the feet of the men who took out your husband, they're coming for you. Not because Peter was anybody, not because they had lied to Peter, but they lied to the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you, lying to the Holy Ghost is lying to God. Because the Holy Ghost is God. That, that is the, the Holy Trinity right there in a nutshell to let you know how much emphasis the Scripture puts on God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Uh, and if you're, you're lying to the Holy Ghost, you're lying to God. Uh, and there is a mystery that comes with the, with the thought and the process that we believe as the Trinity, the mystery of the Trinity. Uh, we know about the Trinity because it's revealed in the Word of God. Throughout the Word of God, we see God the Father. We see God the Son. We see God the Holy Ghost. A lot of people will tell you that... Well, we don't see uh, God the Son or God the Holy Ghost until you get over into the New Testament. You're not looking deep enough in the Old Testament. If you're missing, if you're missing God the Son and God the Holy Ghost uh, in, in the Old Testament, you better read it again and let it do more than bless your soul. Uh, you need to let it open up some understanding and see the divinity of, of the Trinity. In the beginning uh, was God. In the beginning, always there. Uh, we will know. Uh, uh, we know the Scriptures and we know uh, the Trinity by the Scriptures. We're not going to know it by philosophy we're not going to know it by logic does it make sense to our logic we can't fathom it we can't comprehend it we can investigate it and the investigation does not seem to give us enough we can uh, we cannot understand infinitely we cannot understand eternity we cannot understand the uh, that god is everywhere all the time we cannot understand that we're not going to ever die, that we're going to live through eternity. Men beg to die. Men beg to die. They beg for life to be over. But no born-again believer ever uh, believes that life is over. Because we believe that there is eternity that waits us. We can't understand that. We can't, uh, we, we can't even we can't fathom any of those things. We can't understand uh, uh, eternity. We don't even understand how a flower, a beautiful flower, can come out of black dirt and grow into a beautiful bud, and then from a beautiful bud to a blossom to a flower. I don't know how that happens. You put a seed in the ground and you cover it up, and it becomes that. We depend on it. We depend on that for food. We put that seed in the ground. And, and we're pretty confident because that packet said whatever your favorite vegetable is or fruit is that you place that seed in the ground, uh, uh, you're confident uh, that that's going to come out of the ground. Take it a step further. When you get out of here today uh, and you get in your car and you go home, uh, uh, very few in this congregation uh, probably knows everything that makes that car function. But don't stop us from driving it, does it? Because it's so much better than walking. We, we can't understand it. We can't fathom it. And I've never figured this one out. We know absolutely nothing about a car, but when it breaks down, what do we do? We pop the hood. <laughs> For what? <laughs> to see if the engine's still there? Because we don't even, we, what is that? I've never seen that before. Because typically that's the only time most people pop the hood. They don't check their oil. They don't do any of those things. Oh, what's that thing? That's what makes it run. We don't know anything about the brake lines and, and, and the, all the, that comes through that. But you know what we do? We accept it. We accept it. I don't know how that seed became that piece of fruit. But that don't stop me from eating that fruit. I don't know how that became that. I don't know how that car operates. That don't stop me from wanting it. That don't stop me from accepting it. That don't stop me from driving it. Isaiah 40, 18 says, whom, To whom then will we liken God? Or what likeness will we compare unto Him? You try to prove the Trinity, you're going to lose your mind. But if you deny the Trinity, you're going to lose your soul. So just like we were singing this morning, just believe it. I believe. I, I cannot fully understand the mysteries of God's Word, but I believe it. Our declaration of faith in the church of God starts with those two words throughout all of them. We believe. Every article of it. We believe. We believe. We believe. We believe. And that's wonderful, but so many times uh, when people ask us uh, uh, why we worship like we do, why we live the way we do, we say, well, we believe. 
I want to get to the place that not only in the declaration of faith, uh, but the Word of God, and I, and I believe that I've already got there in my Christian walk, but I want those uh, that are disciples underneath me as well, uh, each one of us as believers, each believer that I have contact with, uh, that we can move from a we believe to I believe. Uh, because if you believe something, you accept it, uh, and you understand uh, that there is something there of importance to you, uh, we need to believe it. It's a mystery. Uh, we say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God this, and I'm going to ask God that, and I'm going to ask God this. You ain't going to ask God nothing. You ain't going to ask him anything. Uh, you're going to be like Brother Elijah was preaching there in camp. You're going to take that crown, and you're going to lay it down uh, at, the feet of his, uh, at the feet of Jesus. Uh, you're going to go to uh, ask a question, and you know what's going to come out? Holy. Yeah, that, that other mystery that you couldn't figure out, well, I want to ask what happened to this, and you go to say it, and you say, holy. Why? Because nothing else matters. Uh, because you're in the presence uh, of the King of kings uh, and the Lord of lords, uh, and we'll begin to sing, uh, holy, uh, holy, uh, holy uh, is the Lord God Almighty. Uh, and we know that at that point uh, we're coming back and the whole earth uh, is going to be filled uh, with his glory. Uh, listen, it's not going to be. Just go ahead and, uh, and determine that right now. You're not going to ask. Ask that mysterious question when you get to heaven. Uh, so quit trying to figure out uh, what God does not want you to figure out. There's mysteries uh, in his word uh, that we can never figure out. Uh, and that's all right. Uh, I don't know how God can take a body uh, that's ate up with cancer. Uh, and then once again they say uh, we give you six months to live. Uh, and then to come back the next week uh, to say I don't see anything. Uh, why is is that that's impossible but I serve the God of the impossible it takes impossible and makes possible what are you saying pastor I'm saying I don't understand fully divine healing but I sure accept it I don't fully understand divine healing but what I do know about it is it was provided in the atonement it's all about Jesus it's wrapped up in him it's wrapped up. That's why he came. So that's the mystery of the Trinity, the majesty of the Trinity. Each person, each individual, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Just like Jesus we talked about during Christmas. We've done the math, and we've all agreed. I don't add up. I don't get it. How he was 100% God and 100% man. That math doesn't make any sense to us. So when we think of the Trinity, we think, well, God the Father is 33% God. Jesus is 33.3, 33 continue that three for infinity. And then the Holy Ghost is 33.3 infinity. No. God the Father is 100% God. God the Son, 100% God. God the Holy Ghost, 100% God. Each person. John made that clear in John 1, 1 and 3. Uh, he said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Uh, so who created everything in the beginning? Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That Hebrew word there for God in Genesis 1 and 1 is Elohim, uh, which is plural. And that plural word of God is paired with a singular verb literally in the beginning. Uh, God's made heaven and earth. Then God said, uh, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Genesis 1 uh, and 26. Deuteronomy uh, 6 and 4 says, hear, O Israel, uh, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Jews use this verse to say, see, you can't have a trinity. There's only one Lord. But the Hebrew word here for one is ehad, meaning one as a unity. We are the body of Christ, members in particular. There's several of us in this room, but we're one body. We're one body, and we must operate and function as one body. God the Father is the first person of the Godhead. And he, God is the eternal, everlasting Father. You know what that means? Uh, there has never been a time, get this, there has never been a time that God the Father was not a father. 
God the Father did not just become a father the same day that Joseph became a father. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, that's not when God the Father became father. He was always, he's always been the father. For him to be an eternal father, there has to be an eternal son. So if he was the eternal father, uh, uh, Jesus born in Bethlehem, he didn't just become uh, the son. We've said this, uh, that God looked over heaven uh, and looked for someone that was able to be that sacrifice. Abraham was not suffice. Michael was not suffice. Uh, there was not one in heaven. Uh, and Jesus said, uh, I will be that sacrifice uh, in God the son. And God the son, uh, Proverbs 30 and 4 says, who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind of his feet? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established uh, all the ends of the earth? Uh, what is his name and what is his son's name? If ask, thou can tell. Psalms 2 and 7 says, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Jesus, God the Son, in the beginning, God. In the beginning was the Word. And who's the Word in the New Testament? Jesus, the Son. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. But not only was the Word with God, remember uh, reading in the New Testament that Jesus said this, if you've seen my Father, if you've seen me, you've seen my Father. Why? Because Jesus is God. That will burn some brain cells. But if we do not believe if we do not believe, faith is believing, faith is trusting and depending upon God. In that third person of the Godhead that, from my opinion, the most overlooked of the Trinity, God the Holy Ghost. You, re, you encounter a lot of saved people. You do. You encounter, I don't know about you, but everybody I try to witness to is saved. While smoking a Marlboro and cussing, cussing everybody out before you came up to them. And then all of a sudden have a blessed day as they're flipping their cigarette behind it so you don't see it. But everybody seems to be saved. Very few press on to sanctification. And even fewer press in to the fullness, the fullness of the Holy Ghost. But do you know that the Christmas story begins with the Holy Ghost? The Christmas story begins with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary. And what did that angel say? This has been conceived and you has been conceived by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was there in the beginning uh, and, and the Trinity there in the beginning of the Christmas story, Matthew 1, 20, 21. But while he thought on these things, just talking about Let's talk about Joseph. Now, put yourself in Joseph's shoes. You're a teenage young man, and the teenage young men of that time was probably the mindset of our mid-20s and 30s probably now, I would think. What are you saying? I'm saying we've got some immature teenagers in our day and time. But not then. They, they, Mary, some say, was between 13 to, at the high point, I think, they say 16 years old. So these were, and, and it's possible that Joseph may have been a little older. He may have been in his early 20s. But still, to, to, you're engaged. You're a good Christian young man. You believe in purity. And they follow the Old Testament teachings. They follow the Ten Commandments. Uh, there, there has been no fornication. There's, uh, and uh, he's saying, I know I haven't touched her. Uh, we're engaged. Matter of fact, when, when, when you're engaged, there, there's a separation that has to take place to be sure. Uh, and so all of this is done. Usually their custom is when they got engaged that the young man would go back to his father's house and uh, build a chamber on the side of his house for his new bride. So he would be away from her. So... He is saying, I haven't been near her. So he's trying to figure this out. I know how this works. I understand how this works. My dad had a conversation with me about the birds and the bees. So I, I fully comprehend how this works. And if it was not me, then Mary, we need to talk. That's, 
That's the mindset of the day, and I guarantee you it was the mindset of them because that's just the way it is. Mary had to say this, do what you will, be it as you will unto me. I don't understand it. I can't figure it out. This baby's growing inside of me and nature, and everything tells me there's only one way that can happen. That did not happen, but yet, there he is. I almost said, hoop, there he is. There he is. There, how could this be? She asked that question. How can this be? We put a lot of focus on Mary. What about Brother Joseph? He's sitting there, and he's saying, listen, I love Mary. I don't know what she done and went and did, but I'm just going to put her away privately, and I'm going to walk away from this for her reputation and my reputation. I don't know what's going on here. And that's when this angel appears to him in Matthew 1, 20 and 21, why he thought he's thinking on these things. I mean, it was just kind of dangerous to think on these things. Amy and I saw this guy walking down the sidewalk this morning, and Amy saw the guy, just his body. He's like, she said, New Year, I got to get this body in shape. Guess I better do it. And you know what we do? We get about a block, and we say, ah, I'll wait until next year. <laughs> so it's dangerous. So he's thinking on these things, and, and we know it's dangerous because Joseph begins to, I'll put her away privately. When we begin to try to figure it out up between here, we're going to get ourselves in a lot of trouble. Angel steps in and says, whoa, wait a minute. Let me shed some light on this. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sins. Joseph woke up, and he said, I'm in with that. I don't understand it. I, I still can't process it or figure it out up here, but that's all I needed to know is it's the will of God. All I need to know is that's what God wants. Uh, all I, how did he know that? How did he know uh, that was the case? Uh, she was conceived in her of the Holy Ghost. God's at work. Uh, God's at work. God has taken uh, uh, God the Holy Ghost uh, and conceived God the Son uh, by God the Father's plan uh, and purpose. All of this is working together. Uh, so right there, uh, we put a lot of focus on baby Jesus uh, in the beginning of the Christmas story. But in the very beginning uh, of the Christmas story is all three. The Trinity is there. Uh, Matthew ends his uh, writings with Jesus' words. Uh, the gospel ends with this. It ends with the Trinity. Uh, we know it as the Great Commission. Matthew 28 and 19. Uh, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. It started with the Trinity. It, the Gospels, the mandate that we have is uh, of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, uh, God the Holy Ghost. Uh, and we know that that is the majesty of it. Uh, but what is important to us is the saving ministry of the Trinity. We're here today as born-again believers uh, because the saving ministry of the Trinity. Look back at our text in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then drop down to verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus said, I believe it's in John 14, verse 6, I believe, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the life. So if you're not saved, you still have an existence. You have an existence. It's Paul and I's favorite song, You're Dead Men Walking. We say that. We come back from Alabama on a trip, and about every 10 minutes they played that song. Great song, but we were sick of hearing it. But that's how we are as unsaved people. We have an existence, but we're not full of life. He said, I've come, John 10 and 10, the latter part of it, I've come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. You do not have life until you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. 
Dropping down in John 1 to verse 10, he says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. How many knows that's still the case today? The world does not want to know Jesus. They want to open the gifts on Christmas, and they want to celebrate all of that, and they'll, they'll even sing away in a manger in silent night, uh, but they have no desire to have a greater understanding uh, than that uh, of Jesus. But I don't know about anybody else, uh, but I want to have a life uh, that is uh, page 6 of our red bag hymnal. I want to know more uh, about my Lord. Uh, as we enter into 2023, uh, I want to know more uh, about about him. I want to comprehend what is the breadth and the, uh, the length and the height and uh, all the measurements uh, of what he will reveal to us. Uh, if there's a revelation uh, that God wants to give, I want it. I was praying the other day, praying for my children, also praying for my, our congregation. And just thinking along these lines as I was praying prayerfully, considering these things that as as a pastor and as a dad i can i can teach i can disciple i can point you to the word of god i can preach what it says i can pray and fast and i can study and i can give you a lot of knowledge i can put a lot of knowledge up here you can get a grasp of a lot of understanding people people take notes and they write it down they keep it i've seen a lot of people over the years they take notes and I've, I've watched as some have taken notes while the preacher is preaching, and I wonder how many times they go back to the notes. It may look good to take notes in service, but when do we go back to the notes? But we, we have all of this, and all of this is beneficial, and it's called discipleship, but we get nowhere until we have a personal revelation of who he is. And that's my prayer for my children. That's my prayer for your children. That's my prayer for you, that we will, in 2023, have a revelation of who he is and have a revelation uh, of what his will is for our life. Uh, and to understand this, he said, but as many, in verse 12, but as many received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we were selected by the Father. from the, Before the foundations of the world, God selected his believers. He had, if he had not chosen you, you'd never have chosen him no man can come unto uh, to the father unless the spirit draws him nobody can be saved unless the spirit is drawing them. so that's our prayer uh, is that lord when they feel that drawing of your spirit they will come to you ephesians 1 4 and 5 says according he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world uh, that we should be holy and without blame before his love before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So we were selected by the Father and saved by the Son. Isn't it wonderful to know that God chose us? God chose us. We are adopted into the family of God. Uh, being adopted, I would imagine, is a wonderful thing because as parents, uh, when we go to that delivery room and we have them, we got what we got. Amen? We, we hope they're pretty. We hope they grow up to be smart. That's what we got. And that's a wonderful thing. It's great. But the, the beautiful thing about adoption and adoption, adopted children, I think, are reminded this of often, is your parents chose you. And to know that I was born into sin, I had no control over that. I, I had no control over the family that I was born in. I'm glad for the family that I was born in. We had no control that we were born into sin. Our, our earthly parents, our early parents, and Adam and Eve set that in place for us that we're all born sinners. Oh, but when we think about this, God has chosen and made a way that we can come into a new life, and that new life is in Christ Jesus. Uh, God chose us. Uh, verse 6 of Ephesians 1, 6 and 7 says, But to, uh, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. If Gracie was in here, she'd be quoting these along with me because that's what she's learning right now is Ephesians 1 through 3. We was, I was studying the other day, and she was, I asked her to tell me what they said, and she could do it. Jesus is the beloved through him whom we 
are accepted. We're saved by the Son. We're sealed by the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. This is, this is the divinity of the Trinity. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the Holy Spirit of promise? Who is the Holy Spirit of promise? He said, Go ye and tarry there in Jerusalem until you be endued with power on high, the promise of the Father. We're sealed with the promise of the Father, that spirit of promise, the Holy Ghost. So, so think about this, that uh, in this aspect of it, to, to have all of this, this great experience with God and uh, to be saved uh, and to be transformed. Uh, listen to what he said, in whom also you trusted, you've trusted in God, you've heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, uh, and then you believed. And he said, after you believed. After you believed, uh, you're saved. Uh, you've already uh, been touched. You've been changed. you put your trust in God. You've taken a bowed face from sin. You're walking in God. And so many people stop right there, Brother Paul. They say, I'm satisfied with that because I'm not that jerk that I used to be. So I'm good. But that's not where God wants us to stop. He said, after this, uh, he said, whom also after you believe you were sealed uh, with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Uh, too many people's left their inheritance on the table. You shall receive power uh, after the, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Uh, too many has saved and satisfied. Uh, listen, we've got an inheritance uh, until the redemption of the purchased possession uh, unto the praise uh, of his glory. Uh, this kind of seal means uh, there's a legal document uh, that's been signed. Uh, if I told you up here's a million dollars and it belongs to you, you would run over your neighbor to get up here. Uh, can I tell you uh, there is an inheritance uh, that belongs to us uh, as born again believers uh, that we can come uh, into the fullness uh, of the power uh, to be selected by God, saved by the Son. Uh, oh, but I want to be sealed by the Holy Ghost. You go out there, and if you have a deck at home, you go ahead and, and you paint it, and you don't put any water seal on it. See how long it lasts. Before long, it's going to rot, and so many are, even it had salvation experience, they're rotten. Not only are they rotting, they're rotten. Why? Because they never press through to the fullness of God. It's a dangerous thing to say the Holy Ghost is not for this generation. The Holy Ghost is not for me. The Holy Ghost, I can do with or without him. No, you cannot. That's the divinity of the Trinity. We're sealed. That's that, that's that legal document. I'm thankful to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And I believe it's for all to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. As... as I think Brother Elijah made this clear during revival. We all praise God in different ways. We all worship the Lord in different ways. I, I've never seen Sister Gilda run the aisles, but I've never questioned that she's over there worshiping. You can see tears streaming down her face. The Spirit of God begins to, to touch her and begins to, to move in her heart, move in her life. I, I, I've never heard some of us. I don't holler like Paul hollers, but there's no doubt the same Spirit that comes upon him the same spirit comes on me. Brother Hanks, when he lets out that whelp, you know, I don't preach like, I've said this over the years, I've never preached like Pooler, never preached like Hanks. God didn't call me to preach like anybody else. He just called me to preach. But however we worship, however we praise God, some's going to run, that's all right. Some's going to shout, that's all right. You know what I want? I want whatever the spirit is in. Whatever the Spirit is. If the Spirit's not in it, don't do it because you don't need praise. You don't need glory. You don't need uh, recognition. Uh, if you say, I'm going uh, to turn this service around. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, if it starts with that, stay in your seat. Uh, but if there's something inside of you and your, your heart's beating out of your chest and you're saying, man, I don't want to do that. People are going to think that I, I'm doing whatever. Uh, do it. Step out. Be obedient uh, because God is in it and God is working. Uh, so I want the fullness of his will so in order to get the fullness of his will, we've got to be obedient to his will. 
And we've got to believe. Believe for it. Stand with me this morning. Church, can I be honest with you about me in 2022? I started out with a desire to overcome the world and the flesh every time that it came knocking at my door. But I didn't. I had to repent in some places and some spaces. And you say, Pastor, but you be honest, you're going to say you did too. But for us to overcome the world and overcome the flesh and the one that's behind it all, Brother Paul and I was talking, I think it was Brother Paul and I was talking the other day. It might be me and Brother Kevin was talking, and I said, the devil don't have to do much anymore. He's semi-retired. He just stands back and watches us self-implode. Self-implode. But he is behind it all. He is behind it all. So if we're going to overcome the world, how many wants to overcome the world? I, I know it's yours, and you do. we do everything. Let me put we in there. We do everything that we can to try to make it pretty. But it's still our enemy, the flesh. The flesh. We try to dress it holy, but it's still our enemy. We try to do all of these things, but we've got to overcome the flesh. If you don't overcome the flesh, you'll give in to the flesh. And when you give in to the flesh, you're in trouble. If we want to overcome the world, we have to understand that we've been selected by the Father, saved by the Son, and sealed by the Holy Ghost. Jesus must be Lord of our lives. Jesus must be Lord of our lives. You know the wonderful thing about the Holy Ghost? He points you to Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the advocate between us and the Father. Jesus must be Lord because we need Him to rule and reign. And the Holy Ghost can make Him Lord of your life. 1 Corinthians 12 and 3, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus the curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So as we get ready to, to pray, come to these altars for our first altar call of 2023. We as believers must fully believe in the divinity of the Trinity. We have to. We need to believe in the divinity of the Trinity to empower us to do the will of God. It's useless for us to know a part of having the power to perform. It's, it's useless for us to know that, that we have this power, but we never plug in. Worse than that is we're plugged in, but we never operate. We never function. Does a vacuum cleaner do you any good if you don't plug it in? Does it do you any good if you plug it in and then you run around this room? No, you better activate it. You better turn it on. We need the activation. We need to be plugged in. We need to be activated. We need to be filled. We need the full power and the full control. I, I, I don't know about anybody else, but there's been times I didn't want to pull out the big vacuum cleaner. So I walk around here and I just pick up the little pieces. After a while, I just finally say, forget this. And I pull out the vacuum cleaner and plug it up. We do that spiritually. I got this. It's just a little bit. I can handle this. Turn to the big guns. Give it to God. You either trust Him or you don't. It's useless to know in part the whole process. The whole process. Some would say, well, the whole process depends on God. No, the whole process depends on your choice. The whole process in your life depends on your choice. Because whether we choose Him or not, He's still God. The process is still going to take place. And I think that's great. But I want it to take place in my life, in our church, in your life. Don't you? Don't you? The Spirit will never force you to choose the will of God. But can I tell you something? If you choose the will of God, He is going to enforce your choice. How many choose God this morning? How, how, many, how many say that song that we were singing before? I believe for it. 
Come on, I believe for it. Uh, we, we've, we've act like Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterians long enough. Why don't we act Pentecostal when we answer questions around here? Uh, how many believe for it? Amen. I, I, I believe for it. Uh, I choose the will of God. I want the will of God. I choose the will of God. If we'll do that, man, God's going to force your choice. But you can't just say it. You can't just say it. You've got to live like it. You, you've got to walk in that. You, if, your, if your actions don't reflect your words, it's not enough to talk to talk. Talking to talk got to be left in 2022. It's time to walk to walk. And the walk is, I choose the will of God. So I'm walking in the light of His Word. I'm letting Him direct my paths. What are you doing standing? I'm not making a move until I know His will. I'm walking in His will. How many want that? Choose that? God's going to enforce that. So as you find your place around this altar, just tell Him, Lord, I choose your will, and I'm ready for you to enforce your will. Father, we gather in these altars choosing you, choosing the divinity of the Trinity to be powered up in our lives. The enforcement of your presence and your power, the authority, it's not just wrapped up in us. It's not just wrapped up in your word. It's not just wrapped up in our lives, but you want it to be released into a world that desperately needs to know the message that has been placed in us. So as individuals this morning, we choose your will. As a congregation today, we choose your will. And we're just waiting, anticipating for you to enforce it. Oh, we thank you in Jesus' name.